Welcome to a presentation by the Southwest Center for Microsystems Education on the DNA Microarray. In this presentation, we're going to be describing the physical device, how it and how it works. To learn even more about DNA microarrays, be sure to check out our other presentations, one on the introduction of the DNA microarray and its applications, and another one on the fabrication of DNA microarrays. DNA microarrays rely on DNA fragments or single-stranded DNA copies to match up with complementary DNA fragments on the surface of the DNA microarray. The DNA copies are called the targets. The DNA fragments on the microarray are called oligonucleotides and are fabricated using microtechnology processes. Each fragment is a specific DNA sequence and each fragment is a probe that during a DNA test is looking for a complementary target. Once the target is found, the target and the probe rebond or rejoin, forming a hybrid double helix. So what do I mean by hybrid? Hybrids are formed when genes from two different sources are used to form a DNA molecule. Hybrids that you're probably familiar with are hybrid corn, beans, tomato seeds, that kind of thing. Such hybrids are made in order to have a better tasting produce or produce that is made for a specific purpose, such as a corn hybrid that was developed for the production of corn syrup, or to produce produce that better handles the abuse of shipping. So what is DNA hybridization? DNA hybridization is when a single-stranded DNA molecule reanneals or recombines with another single-stranded DNA molecule from another source. If the original single-stranded DNA molecule has sequences that are complementary to the secondary DNA strand, the two strands form a double-stranded DNA hybrid with one strand from one source and one strand from another source. Remember that complementary applies to nucleotide bases A, T, C, and G. Complementary nucleotides form base pairs of A, T, T, A, C, G, or G, C. So what are the physical aspects of DNA microarrays? A DNA microarray is basically a grid on a substrate which is usually made of glass or silicon. Each grid is called a feature or address because each grid is a specific gene or DNA sequence. Each feature contains hundreds or thousands of identical DNA sequences which become the probes. Each of these probes is an oligonucleotide, or oligo for short. Each microarray contains tens of thousands of features with each feature looking for a specific gene. This design allows for thousands of genes to be identified simultaneously. Here is a single feature of a DNA microarray with an oligo of a specific sequence. What is the sequence starting from the substrate going up? I'm going to give you a few seconds. The sequence starting from the substrate up is G T A C T A. G, T, A, C, T, A. This graphic illustrates a DNA microarray with thousands of features to a few features to a single feature depicting a unique DNA sequence. The coloration of the graphic is strictly to illustrate the different features of a DNA microarray with unique oligos of each feature. So let's look at the process of running a DNA test from the beginning to the end. We start with a control sample and a test sample. The control sample could be a healthy cell from a cancer patient, while the test sample is a cancerous cell from the same patient. Once we have the cells, mRNA is extracted from the DNA in the cells. Through reverse transcription, copies are made from the mRNA. Each copy DNA is then fluorescently labeled with cyanide, green cyanide for the control copies, and red for the test copies. The tagged samples are then combined and washed over the DNA microarray. 
When a copy in one of the samples finds a match or a complementary DNA oligoprobe, hybridization occurs and a double-stranded DNA molecule is left on the surface of the array. The array is then scanned to see on which features hybridization occurred and thus which gene sequences were identified. This image shows the results of a DNA test. After the DNA test, the microarray is scanned producing these fluorescent colors created by the dyes that were attached during the sampling process. Green indicates hybridization with the control targets only. Red indicates hybridization with the test targets only. Yellow is hybridization with both the control and test samples. And black is hybridization with neither sample. In other words, there was no hybridization that occurred on those particular features. These images show an Agilent Technologies microarray printed on a 1 inch by 3 inch glass slide. The image on the right shows the microarray after hybridization testing and while being scanned with a laser. One can see the fluorescence of the hybridized molecules, and you can identify the blacks, the reds, the greens, and the yellows. Through the hybridization of synthetic oligoprobes and target DNA molecules, we can identify the presence of genes, gene mutations, and pathogens. A DNA molecule contains thousands of features, allowing us to test for thousands of genes simultaneously. For more information on the DNA microarray, be sure to view our other presentations as well as download the DNA microarray learning module from the SCME website. Thanks for watching.